This is the second part of the series on um, modifying and refinishing a table. So the first part was obviously shrinking the entire thing down to size. It's about a little over two feet shorter than when I got it. And then this part is going to be stripping and refinishing. In this case, um, removing a stain and then putting a different color back on and then clear coating it. If there was paint on this, the process is pretty similar. I personally think it's a little bit easier than stain, but um, this table is pretty much done. I have a couple little touch-up spots, but that's about it. And um, this week things are going to be a little bit different because this took a little bit longer than I was thinking it was going to to finish up, um, which is another reason why I don't like refinishing furniture. It always takes longer than I think it's going to. But anyway, so this video um, I'm going to upload on Saturday. And then the new video I have for this week, I'm going to put up on Sunday. I use a chemical stripper that I get out of um, from Walmart. This clean strip is one of the, the better brands. They do sell a green stripper that I've tried. It doesn't work nearly as well, so it takes forever. I'm not in love with using chemicals, but I, like I said, I don't do a lot of refinishing. It's easily the fastest way to get it done. So you spread this on in a nice even coat. And then once it starts to bubble and peel up, you could you could strip it off. So there's a varnish on this table and that's what will come up first. And then I went through with two coats um, and took it all off. Now my other refinishing video, people will mention PPE. And I like to think that I'm a fairly good at wearing PPE, but at the same time, the word personal is in uh, the word. So, you should really wear what you feel comfortable wearing. I'm not wearing gloves for this just because I'm using tools that have handles on it so I'm not getting any of the stripper on my skin. I know I'm not getting a bit of stripper on my skin because if you do it burns like heck. So um, wear what you feel comfortable wearing. With this I usually wear glasses because it can spatter into your eyes and hurt and I do usually wear gloves. I just don't have any disposable gloves at the moment because they're kind of hard to find at the moment. So you can see I'm using a paint scraper. I scrape off that first layer. And then I put some sawdust on there. The sawdust was kind of a magical thing when I found it out because otherwise you'll have all this goo and gum on the surface. The sawdust absorbs all that leftover varnish. And you could see after that first scraping, it really goes through and removes a lot more stuff. And also the varnish gets absorbed into that sawdust and then you don't have to worry about wiping it up. So that's what this process is a coat of finish, scraping, that whiteness you could see is the old varnish that's coming off, and then the wood's exposed underneath. So that's comparatively what the two pieces look like. And then I'm going to go through it quickly once again on the, the last piece to show you all the pieces, because in the first one I didn't show you, I did it twice. So I just apply a thin coat, and this is 15 minute stripper. And it was quite warm this week. It was in the 90s and extremely humid. So the problem I was having was the stripper was evaporating a little bit before it was time to scrape it. So this project probably would have went a little bit faster if it wasn't so warm out. But there was really nothing I could do about that. So you can see first coat, taking off all that stripper, you know, taking off all that finish. And then I scrape that up, put it into a bucket. And then I'll do the second coat. And like I said, most of these pieces, even the base, I got away with two coats. Let that set up for about 15 minutes and scrape it again. And that got down pretty close to bare wood. Flat, surface like, flat surfaces like this are super easy to strip because there's no detailing. Even the little, there's little groove de detailing in between the planks that was easy to get off. So then scrape it once again and then I'll put the sawdust on there and that will absorb all that extra varnish and as well as take off a bunch of the rest of the, the excess residue. So I'll let this dry because if you try and sand this right now your pad's going to really gum up because that varnish has absorbed into the wood. Uh, the, the, the stripper has absorbed into the wood. So I let this dry overnight before I sand it. And that was basically, this is basically what it looks like. So the next day I could come in with a belt sander with an 80 grit on there. I'm going to go through and sand this whole surface. I end up sanding this down to 120. I can't remember if I show it in the video, but before I stain it, I belt sand it to 120. 
and you can see once I move the camera just how nicely this belt sander is going to clean up that surface. It's really quick work and it leaves it very clean. So just a couple passes and then there's the nice grain. And like I said in the beginning, this is actually sycamore. This is not maple. But you can see how the finish really hides a lot of the spalting that was on this piece as well as the um, identity of the wood. I'm sure there's someone who can look at this sort of stuff and, and tell you what it is even with the finish on it. I, I cannot. So then for the base, obviously this is much more of a pain because there's a lot more detailing, but the process is pretty similar. So I already started doing this. I'm going to show you what I do. Um, I use a paintbrush for this it's easier to get it on all the detailing and I do one side at a time. So I'll flip this four times. So I'll do this side, the two ends, and then the other side. So I'm basically getting the legs um, four times. You can see I'm putting on a liberal amount of finish and then I could scrape the flat surfaces. That's pretty easy. Now for the legs, I'm going to use a brass brush. Um, I can't remember exactly where I got this, but I'm pretty sure they sell these at Harbor Freight. And that brass brush is going to get in all the detailings of the legs, but not mar the finish. Now I've done this on pine wood before. This is the brush I'm using. You could see I could get in there and remove all that finish. I've done this on pine before and the brush will scrape the pine. But since this is maple, it had no effect on it whatsoever, no matter how hard um, I pushed it on there. So you could see once again with the sawdust, I would scrape, put some sawdust on there and then scrape again. and even with that one pass, you could see how much that finish comes off. And then I'm going to go through again and do it twice to each piece and the flat surfaces as well. The flat surfaces are a little bit easier because they're going to be easier to sand as well. But, um, so the problem with refinishing is it's mind numbing work and it's a process like this takes a while. It's not necessarily hard work. You're just doing the same thing repeatedly all day long. So you can see with that sawdust going through, it's really taking the bulk of that finish off. Now I want to get this down pretty far because it's going to have a fairly light stain on it. But if you're going with a darker stain, you don't have to take off as much finish in my opinion. So once I went through those two coats of finish, I could go through with um, two coats of varnish could go through with my orbital sander and get most of the rest of the stain off. I have an 80 grit pad on here. You could see with that, with the circular nature of the pad, I can get into most of the crevices. And I'm just going to go through and, and sand these. This It's just not fun work and it takes a while. But I was happy with how easily it came off. The finished product I'm pretty happy with. As you can see, it's just just a matter of going through. Now once I do the orbital sander, I actually have an older version palm sander and that has a rounded head on it and that gets into the rest of the crevices. So then here switching to the palm sander and you can see how that's kind of getting into into the coves and the curves a little bit better than the orbital sander. So I'll go all the sides so that you're hitting every spot multiple times because I'm going about halfway around the post. So whenever I flip it and I go halfway around again, you're hitting it multiple times and kind of getting all the spots that you missed. But you could see at this point it's, it's lightened up substantially and there's not a lot of finish left on there. So, um, the last thing I do, even after I've done all that sanding, is I put one more coat of, of um, the stripper on the legs after I'm done sanding. It just really goes through and removes the rest of that residue on there and, and really makes it pop. So it's the same process, very light coat of varnish. I'm going through and then scraping it all off. And the next morning I would sand it as well. I didn't show that, but that gets one final sanding and I do that at 120. So this is the tabletop. I'm putting a pre-stain on it. Um, any sort of fine grain lumber, especially, I always use a pre-stain because the stain won't necessarily 
absorb evenly even with a pre-stain but it really helps reduce the blotchiness on on these fine grain lumbers i usually use this on oak and stuff too just as as a precaution because it's cheap and so this was the natural stain i was putting on and it ended up being not dark enough so you'll see later in the video i darken it up but for the base i'm also putting on the pre-stain the other reason I like to use pre-stain, especially on things like the base where there's so many uh, crevices, is if you miss some of the finish, it usually will pop out at you. And when you're gluing things together, if there's glue on stuff, the pre-stain will show you where those glue spots you might not have been able to sand off are. So it comes in handy for that as well. So after um, we decided the natural finish wasn't dark enough, we went with um, Early American. I usually don't use Minwax finishes, but this one actually looked really nice on the Sycamore. So um, that's what I did. I just lightly sanded the natural finish off. Um, I didn't go crazy. It was like 120. I lightly went over it and then redid it with the Early American. And then the base as well. And luckily the base, even though the base is maple, it took the stain fairly similarly to the to the sycamore. It wasn't an issue. Those long side rails are the parts that by far look the most different, but um, it ends up not being an issue because there's going to be a tabletop on it. So once I had that stain on there, I go through with a rag and wipe off all the excess after about 15 minutes. And even with all that prep work, there's still some spots where that old um, finish is on and the stain didn't take. So you can see I'm just going to use a chisel and scrape off that old finish and then I'll dab some new stain on there um, so it will absorb in there. Also because these legs were turned, anywhere that there's a, a semi-flat surface is, is technically end grain not uh, edge grain, so it's going to absorb the stain much more than on the flat surfaces. So before I put the finish on there, I went through and lightly sanded all those flat surfaces so they're a little bit lighter than the stain surface and the whole piece will look similar. For the finish, I'm using General Finishes Arm and Seal. There's heavier, dutier finishes you could put on tabletops, but this one's really good, and a lot of woodworkers that I like and watch their videos and respect on YouTube have used this on tables, so um, I'm using it as well. It's a very easy finish. It's I find it to be nicer than polyurethane and a little more durable. If you put it on with a rag, you don't need a paintbrush, and you can see I'm just smearing on this first coat. I put it on pretty thickly. Um, thick enough that it's a nice dollop of finish but not too thick that I have to worry about puddles and and um, and drips so this is what both those pieces look like after that first coat then I'm going to go through and lightly sand the surface with 400 grit sandpaper this is going to knock down all the rough spots. I don't do a ton of sanding beforehand, so there's usually some, some raised grain and, and whatnot to take off. And then I'll wipe down the surface with a rag and then follow, follow that up with some paint thinner just to get all the dust off. And then I put on second coat. Same process. I'm still putting on a pretty thick coat. I'm getting in all those pieces. You can see what, kind of from here what I was talking about with the turned legs now being the same color. If, you, if I didn't go back and um, sand over that part, those top areas would have been much darker. So once again, the table's also getting second coat. You just wipe it all on. Now I do this at the end of the day, so I, don't, I could still use my shop during the day. And then same thing, between second and third coat, I'm gonna go through with 400 grit sandpaper, knock it all down again, clean up the surface, and put on third coat. And this is another reason why I don't like finishing is because it could tie up your shop, especially if you have a small shop like I do. Getting dust in these things is a pain in the butt unless you have a spe spe specific room for it. So I do this at the end of the day. The general finishes is great. It takes about 12 hours to dry. So by the time I come in in the morning, it's dry and I can um, put it aside and then recoat it that night. So then this is the final coat I'm going to be putting on, and my, I believe my camera cuts out during this, but before final coat, so this is going to be the fourth coat, the first three are put on, you're sanding in between. Um, this I'm sanding with 600 grit sandpaper, very lightly sanding, and then I'm going to go through and put on a, an extremely light coat. 
So I'm, I'm wringing out my pad and then wiping on a light coat. The purpose of this is to put on a final thin coat. So this will be the fourth coat. And then um, it's thin enough that it dries very quickly. And the probability of, of the particles in the air at the time. And this is the finished piece kind of propped in my shop waiting for pickup. This customer is really cool. So I'm hoping I'll get some finished uh, photos of it and I could update the, th the thumbnail to get a little bit of a, a better view.